Eddie, I get you on camera finally. <laughs> <laughs> You've been shy. You're not shy. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so, what can you tell me? We have Pelican Island over so, your shoulder here. Yeah, you made it up the Centennial Boardwalk yes. here. Yes. Like Kathy told you before, you started off on the most recent refuge, uh, uh, de designated in 2019, and you kind of work your way backwards in time until the first wildlife refuge started in 1903. Our wonderfully historic Pelican Island National Wildlife Refuge. What you're looking at there is Pelican Island proper. And at the time, you heard, it was uh, designated as a wildlife refuge because it was a very important rookery to uh, lots of important birds here in Florida and around the United States. And now it's still a rookery. It'd probably be hard to see the little white specks on the island from here, but you're entering nesting season. So we have our birds still using Pelican Island today. That's so awesome. Tell me about Paul Craigle. So Paul Craigle was a wonderful man. The more I learn about him, somebody you would imagine like a hero or someone you want to kind of be like in your life because he has passion and had passion for something and was enthusiastic enough to kind of put his life behind a very specific cause. Um, so Paul Craigle was somebody who lived in this area and was passionate about duck hunting and birds and migratory species of birds just in general. And so Paul Craigle noticed the importance of this island and at the time the millinery trade, so uh, uh, collecting feathers off of birds unfortunately no longer alive, for beautiful hats for people in uh, uh, urban cities like in New York. Uh, one scientist did a survey of Fifth Avenue in New York and I think he counted something like uh, a couple hundred species of birds just by looking at feathers in women's hats and some of the most beautiful ornate hats were entire birds so this trade was so big and it was moving really fast at the time that uh, a pound of feathers was worth more than a pound of gold wow or even an ounce of feathers an ounce of gold you could do the math yeah uh, um so paul craigle he kind of noticed before other people did the importance of the island and wanted to protect the birds and kind of on his own uh, kind of protected the birds here and uh, a few activists and environmentalists at the time brought it to the attention of Teddy Roosevelt and Teddy Roosevelt felt that he had to do something and with a, a snap of a finger or the swipe of a pen he designated uh, Pelican Island as our nation's first wildlife refuge and put a badge on Paul Craigle, and he became our first wildlife warden. Wow, that is so awesome. And I liked what uh, Jeremy was saying earlier, the power of one person. Yeah, yep. and that's what I mean, but it was really important. And I look at Paul Craigle and what he did as uh, like a model for something we can all do in our lives, because it's the world is so big and there's so many people and there's so many things happening that you could get bogged down by it. But if you could just kind of pick out what drives you and what you could be enthusiastic and passionate about and just put yourself into that like Paul Craigle did in protecting this one little five acre island, you know, and the importance of that. And now you have us here, you know, following in his footsteps and, you know, the wildlife refuge system, which is no longer one small island, which protects species and habitats around the United States. From one act, I literally have goosebumps even on my legs because it's like... <laughs> Because it's so exciting, one person stood up. And I know it's hard because a lot of us, we think somebody else will do it or we don't want the, the problems or the hassle. But if we, like you said, follow what fuels us mm -hmm. and what drives us mm -hmm. and let that carry us, then, you know, that gives us energy. And, and get together with other people, like you said. Yeah, totally. Because Paul Craigle, although one person, you know, his enthusiasm and passion is inf was infectious at the time and got other people to act. And it may seem too big for us, like you said, and it may feel like, oh, what I do is not enough, but what you do and your enthusiasm and passion will be infectious to the others around you and help other people to help you act. And if we all could work together as one big team, one big family, then we can get a lot done. All right, so here he is. The man, the myth, the legend, Paul, Paul Craigle. Craigle, look at that, Oh, And there's the... You know, we used to play dress up with my grandmother's hats, and now I remember these big feathers, and I'm like, oh, never thought about where those came from. No, not at all, not at all. 
Wow. You, you can imagine at the time when you had such large, dense congregations of birds, and Kathy mentioned how easy it would have been for these hunters who were working for a living. They were working for their livelihood to just get as many as they can and right. ship them to these places where people were just adorning their hats because, you know, that was really important at the time. I look at this picture of Paul Craigle and you can see the connection that he has with these birds. Like, you could see it in his eyes and in the trust of the bird, the connection that he has with them. And that really, yeah. that's just yeah. a, amazing, isn't it? I know. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I mean, when I was in the Redwoods, there's a picture of a, a group of people circled around that they got together and protected um, this section of the Redwood Forest. And it's like, if they hadn't done that and stood up, I wouldn't be walking through it with all these other generations of people after they did this a long time ago. So what we do today will make a difference. Yes, it will. One person can make a difference. There it is.